The series starts with a girl named Ayano Kanaji exterminating a spider monster using her flame powers. After her job is done, she goes back to hang with her friends. Meanwhile, Kazume Yagami, a banished member of the Kanaji family, has returned to Japan. The businessman just hired him to get rid of evil spirits in his home. There, Kazuma meets one of his cousins, Yuki, who was hired for the same job. Yuki belittles Kazuma, but when the evil spirit appears, Yuki is easily defeated. On the other hand, Kazuma utilizes his wind powers to successfully defeat the spirit. Back at the Kanaji household, Ayano meets Ren who informs her that his brother Kazuma has returned to Japan after Yuki reported it to the Kanaji family head at Jugo. Kazuma's father, Jemun, banished him from the family after he could manipulate fire. Moreover, he was defeated by Ayano in the battle to be the next family head and the successor of Enraiha, their sacred sword. Later that night, a stranger breaks into the Kanaji household and kills Yuki. The family investigates the next morning and learns that they were killed by a wind user. Their suspect is Kazuma, and they send their best men to capture him. Unbeknownst to Jugo, his daughter Ayano tags along to confront Kazuma herself. On the way there, Ayano gets trapped in a cage of air, separating her from the rest. The Kanaji men confront Kazuma, but a mysterious hand magically appears and kills them with wind magic. Ayano breaks free from her prison and assumes that Kazuma kills their men. Kazuma tries to explain himself, but Ayano doesn't listen and attacks him, forcing Ayano to flee. Due to her disobeying orders, Ayano was grounded by his father and she rants to her friends about Kazuma. Meanwhile, Jugo and Genma think Kazuma is too smart to recklessly declare war on the Kanaji household. Genma volunteers to contact his son so Jugo can talk to him. Genma and Kazuma meet at a deserted park. Kazuma wants to show his father that he finally surpassed him after being discarded due to being weak. Genma uses his signature blue flames, but Kazuma contacts the wind spirits and defeats Genma. Kazuma goes back to his hotel, where Ren was waiting for the chance to talk to him. Ren asks if Kazuma is now a contractor, an individual who makes a contract with the spirit lords. However, Kazuma just dodges his question. Ren also tries to convince Kazuma to go back to their family, but Kazuma tells him that he'll never bow down again to the Kanaji family. Meanwhile, Ayano receives a text from Ren informing him of his location. She goes to the hotel to challenge Kazuma after their unfinished fight last time. Later that night, a wind user cuts the hotel Ren and Kazuma were staying at. Kazuma and Ren were able to escape, but the stranger finally shows up and confronts Kazuma. During their fight, Ren was kidnapped and the stranger vanished. The cut building fell on Ayano, who had to burn her way out. At the destroyed hotel, special investigative police had figured out that a wind user probably caused the destruction. Moreover, the woman in charge suspects she knows who it is since a famous wind user had just come home from abroad. Meanwhile, Kazuma heads to the Kanaji household to report Ren's kidnapping. The guards attack him, but he defeats them all. He then explains himself to Jugo, who invites him inside. While they are conversing, Ayano arrives and attacks Kazuma, but Jugo stops her. Jugo explains that the most likely culprit of Ren's kidnapping is Ryuya, a member of the Fuga Wind clan. The Fuga clan has served the Kanaji Fire clan for the past 300 years after their god was imprisoned by the Kanaji clan. Now the Fuga clan plans to release their god using Ren's fire powers. Kazuma and Ayano head to the mountain where the Fuga clan's ritual is being performed. However, their car explodes when Ryuya arrives to block their way. Kazuma leaves Ayano to fight Ryuya while he goes to rescue Ren. The Fuga clan just finished the ritual, but Kazuma was able to save Ren before he was consumed. Ryuya arrives after defeating Ayano and merges with their released lord. Unfortunately, the lord was confined for too long and went berserk attacking the Fuga clan and heading to the Kanaji clan to exact revenge. Kazuma and Ren go to Ayano, who is lying unconscious and wounded after being defeated. Thankfully, Kazuma has a rare elixir that he uses to save her. The three then race after Yuya. Yuya's dark energy is causing evil spirits to sprout throughout the mountainside. Ren stays behind to banish the evil spirits while Kazuma and Ayano fight Yuya. Kazuma conjures a large downburst of wind, but Yuya was able to survive the attack. Ayano fights Ryuya to buy time for Kazuma to summon more power. She was able to cut off Ryuya's arm and burn him, but he still wouldn't go down. Finally, Kazuma uses his contract with the Wind Spirit Lord to summon a large tornado, decimating Ryuya and creating an opening for Ayano to deliver the finishing blow. A few days later, the special investigative police discover the destruction of the mountainside fight. The one is now confident that Kazuma has returned to Japan. Meanwhile, Kazuma visits his father in the hospital who was injured in their last fight. Kazuma attends a party at the Kanaji household and a girl named Misao serves him. She was friendly at first, but she suddenly tries to stab Kazuma and fails. 
She is the younger sister of one of the men sent to capture Kazuma in the past and she blames Kazuma for his death. The next day, Ayano bumps into Kazuma with a woman in his arms. After Kazuma leaves, Ayano's friends start teasing her for being jealous. Ayano ditches her friends and decides to stalk Kazuma. Since she can't find Kazuma, she calls Ren to help her search. Ren finds Kazuma inside a cafe. They watch as Kazuma meets up with another woman and is shocked to see that the woman is Miso. Ayano and Ren watch as they leave the cafe and follow them to a hotel. At the hotel entrance, Kazuma suddenly jumps away as a sniper shoots at him. More men appear and they attack Kazuma. Ayano and Ren confront Mizo and ask her what she's doing. Mizo apologizes and tells them that she just wants revenge. Unfortunately, Kazuma shows himself unscathed after defeating Mizo's men. Mizo flees but Ayano chases after her. The two are about to fight when Kazuma intervenes. He tells Ayano that she doesn't have to intervene since Mizo can't hurt him anyway. Mizo tries to use her fire powers on Kazuma but she just gets deflected. She breaks down crying and Kazuma wraps her in his jacket then leaves. Later that night, a mysterious boy promises to help Mizao. In a subway somewhere, a random woman is attacked and absorbed by mysterious slimes. Mizao and the mysterious boy named Tenshi inspect the bodies of people they absorbed with their slimes. Meanwhile, Ayano heads to Kazuma's hotel to give him a new job. Multiple drained bodies have been found. Ayano volunteers to help him find the murderer, but Kazuma denies his help, causing Ayano to leave angrily. Outside, Ayano suddenly gets attacked by the slimes. Thankfully, Kazuma planned to use her as bait in the first place. They defeat the slimes together and Kazuma finds its source, Misao, who has accepted an evil spirit in her body. Ayano was about to kill Misao, but Kazuma stops her, letting Misao escape. Juba decides to give the task of eliminating Misao to her family. However, they are worried that Kazuma would again defend her. Ayano volunteers to stop Kazuma if this happens. They then go to meet Kirika, the woman in charge of the special investigative police. She attracts Miso to a church and reports it to the Kanaji family. They then surround Miso, but Kazuma appears once again. To stop Kazuma from reaching the church, Ayano climbs a tower and jumps from the top, shooting balls of fire at Kazuma. Kazuma has no choice but to block the fires and catch the falling Ayano. The two argue on the ground when a sudden surge of evil energy explodes at the church. Kazuma, Ayano, and Ren run to the church and find Miso standing among the corpses of her family. Miso attacks Kazuma with her enhanced fire attacks but it still doesn't work on him. Tenshi appears and tells Misao she was never strong enough to defeat Kazuma in the first place. He was just using her to gain energy. He introduces himself to Kazuma as Michael Hurley, an apprentice of someone Kazuma defeated in the past. Michael transforms Misao into a slime dragon which starts attacking everyone. Kazuma saves Ayano, but he gets injured in the process. And so Ran and Ayano have to buy time for Kazuma to heal and power up. Kazuma activates his contract with the Spirit Lord and enhances Ayano's flames, changing her red fire into blue. With it, Ayano was able to purify the dragon, burning Michael without killing Misao. To atone for her sins, Jumo sends Misao to a convent where Kazuma, Ayano, and Ren visit her. Kazuma tells her he saved her because, in the past, Misao defended him from the other kids who bullied him for having no powers. In a change of scene, a student is hurriedly leaving school at night. Before she can leave, a mysterious voice suddenly tells her to go away. She looks back and screams at what she sees. A few days later, Jugo orders Ayano to go to her school since they received a report that an evil spirit is appearing at night. He also assigns Kazuma as Ayano's bodyguard. That night, Ayano and Kazuma head to the school. Before they can enter, they hear a noise from the bushes and find Ayano's friends, Nanis and Yukari, also wanting to investigate the school. The group enters the building and they find a floating white light telling them to go away. The white light subjects them to multiple traps like blowing them away with wind, putting liquid wax on the floor, scaring them with an anatomy doll, or dropping buckets in their head. Ayano attacks the white light but Kazuma stops her. It turns out that the light wasn't an evil spirit, but instead, a pixie. The pixies are scaring away people so they can grant the final wish of a dying grandfather to make an aging cherry blossom bloom one last time. After making the tree bloom, the pixies peacefully leave. A few days later, Ren and his friend Cannon head out after school to eat and sing karaoke. Meanwhile, Ayano is doing her job of defeating evil spirits with Kazuma as her bodyguard. Ayano then convinces Kazuma to treat her to dinner. On the way home, Ren witnesses a girl singing in the park. The girl invites Ren to play and introduces herself as Ayumi. At dinner, Kazuma leaves when a wind spirit suddenly calls for him. He goes out to talk to a wind spirit and it turns out to be Tiana, a pixie. Tiana asks for Kazuma's help in retrieving their stolen treasure. Back at the park, men in suits suddenly arrive and attempt to take a Yumi away by force. 
Ren defends her, but he learns that the men are from the Suwabuki Earth family. Ren hesitates, but he still decides to defend Ayumi, forcing the men to retreat. At home, Jugo tells Ayano that they got a call from the Tsuwabuki family saying that Ren stole their treasure. Ayano leaves to find Ren. Meanwhile, Tana leads Kazuma to the thieves who stole their treasure, which turns out to be the Tsuwabuki family. The Tsuwabuki family is in charge of the Taizai, a ritual to suppress a behemoth under Mei Fuji from escaping. The leader of the Tsuwabuki family, Kireya, detects Kazuma and pulls him to the ground. Kazuma defends himself and escapes by showing them Tiana, warning them that they stole from the pixies. At the same time, Ayumi wants to go to the beach, so Ren takes her there. On the way, Ayumi reveals that she needs to be sacrificed for the Taizai ritual. Ren tries to talk her out of it, but she already accepts her faith. On the beach, Ayumi's older sister, Mayumi, appears with her bodyguard, Yuji, to take Ayumi back. Ayumi goes with them, but Yuji starts mistreating her for trying to escape. Ren frights Yuji to take Ayumi back, but Mayumi then reveals that Ayumi is just a one-month-old clone of her, who will also expire in a month. Ayumi and Mayumi head back to the Suabuki household, where Kazuma was keeping watch from a distance. Upon seeing Ayumi, Tian exclaims that their treasure was inside her. Inside the Tsubabuki household, Ayumi's energy is too low for the ritual, so Kuria decides to put Mayumi inside a crystal to supplement the needed energy. Yuju promises to defend the crystal so Mayumi can be revived after the ritual. In reality, Kuria is hatching a cruel plan. She has already imprisoned her father and is planning to use Mayumi as the host in her plans. In the Kanagi household, Ayano confronts Ren who is dejected after the revelations he learned from Mayumi. Ayano scolds her for abandoning her friend and asks him what he really wants. Ren realizes he wants to believe there is some way that they don't have to sacrifice Ayumi. As such, Ayano and Ren break into the Tsuwabuki household. They were stopped by Yuji, who is now a stone golem after receiving power from Kiraya. Yuji defeats Ayano and is about to kill Ren when Kazuma swoops in and saves them. With the three of them working together, they defeat Yuji, but Kiraya appears to stop them. Kazuma sends Ren ahead to Ayumi while he and Ayano fight Kiraya. Inside the cave where the ritual will be held, Ren scares away Ayumi's guards and attempts to convince Ayumi to live. Ayumi tries to be resolute that she needs to be sacrificed, but Ren's pleas reach her heart. Kazuma arrives to help them after leaving Ayano alone to fight Kiraya. Kazuma breaks the crystal where Mayumi is being held, but the cave immediately starts caving in when the crystal was destroyed. Kazuma, Ren, Ayumi, and Mayumi escape the cave and see Kiraya's father dying in prison. Before he dies, the old Suwabuki head reveals Kiraya's plan to them. Kazuma hurriedly returns to Ayano and Kiraya's battlefield. There he reveals that Kiraya wasn't really planning to seal the behemoth, but instead absorb its powers. Unfortunately, the destruction of the cave and crystal prematurely breaks the behemoth's seal, allowing it to escape. Meifuji slowly erupts and a large lava monster escapes from cracks in the ground. Kazuma, Ayano, and Ren proceed to fight the behemoth trying to escape. Unfortunately, all their attacks don't have any effects. Left with no choice, Ayumi proceeds with the ritual to save Ren from the behemoth. When the behemoth is defeated, Ayumi collapses and slowly fades away as she consoles a dying Ren. She then reverts to an egg, which was the pixie's stolen treasure that the Suwabuki family used in creating her. A few days later, Ren is at the beach reminiscing about Ayumi, and he states that Ayumi's words still live in his heart. In a change of scene, Kazuma, Ayano, and Ren head to an amusement park. Chuko sent them there to investigate after they received a report of spiritual activities. Moreover, Ren's classmates also tag along so they can cheer Ren up who is still sad after Ayumi's death. At the park, Ren's classmates immediately take Ren with them, leaving Ayano and Kazuma alone to investigate. However, Ayano gets distracted by all the guys harassing girls in the park. In the afternoon, they find two people spying on them. However, it turns out it was Nanis and Yukari spying on her date with Kazuma. Kazuma also suspects that Jugo just sent them there so he and Ayano can get along. Meanwhile, a blonde woman had just arrived in Japan. She declares that she will rightfully claim the title that some unworthy clan now possesses. At school, Ayano is distracted, which infuriates her teachers. Her friends start teasing her that she's distracted because she's going on a date with Kazuma, which turns out to be true. During their date, a bunch of robbers hijacks the restaurant, but Kazuma and Ayano just keep eating. The robber is about to attack them, but a spirit beast suddenly burns his knife. The beast then attacks the remaining robbers, chasing them away. The spirit beast was controlled by the blonde woman. She introduces herself as Catherine McDonald, from the McDonald Fire family in the U.S. She came to Japan to reclaim the title of strongest fire user from the Kanaji family. Catherine and Ayano fight, and Ayano wins thanks to the coaching Kazuma gave her. 
Catherine retreats but promises to be back. With their date ruined, Ayano and Kazuma instead eat in a roadside ramen shop. A few days later, a new magic user is killing evil spirits one after another in the streets of Japan. With her spirit beast, Catherine is training for a rematch with Ayano. Unfortunately, she doesn't care about hiding her powers from the public so Kirika sends Kazuma to apprehend her. Catherine challenges Kazuma to a fight, but she immediately gets defeated. When Catherine learns that Kazuma is for hire, she hires her to be his coach in her upcoming rematch. Kazuma delivers the rematch letter to Ayano, who immediately gets jealous about how close Catherine is clinging to him. Meanwhile, Catherine slowly develops a crush on Kazuma. On the day of their rematch, Catherine declares that she will bring Kazuma to America with her if she wins. She uses multiple fire wisps to attack Ayano from all angles, just like Kazuma taught her since Ayano's weakness is multiple enemies. At first, Catherine is winning, but Ayano learns to cope with her weakness during the fight and defeats Catherine. However, Catherine decides to stay in Japan to win Kazuma's love. In another episode, Yukari just won a raffle and she invites Ayano, Ren, and Kazuma to a hot springs resort. In reality, Jugo planned the whole thing to get his daughter and Kazuma together. Unfortunately, Gemma was also in the resort with Kirika for his therapy. Ayano and her friends enjoy the hot springs while Kazuma goes to the mixed gender bath. There he meets Catherine who wasn't familiar with the concept of Japanese mixed gender bathing. She runs away in embarrassment at suddenly seeing her crush. After Kazuma's back, he bumps into his father and the two start fighting. Ayano and Ren don't know how to stop them but their fight ends when Kirika reminds Gemma his food is getting cold. After dinner, Kazuma decides to take a bath again but ends up in a fight with his father one more time. They stop when they get reminded that the baths have a curfew. Inside the women's bath, Catherine makes Ayano jealous by telling her that she and Kazuma had a bath together. Their argument gets interrupted when Kazuma was sent flying through the wall since he and his dad started fighting again. Ayano wonders if it's their way of talking to each other. Later, Ayano spends the rest of the night tending to Kazuma's wounds while Ren tends to his father's wounds. At Ayan's school, a student named Atsumi sneakily takes pictures of the girls in his school, including Nanis. Unfortunately for him, the girls see him. They also learn he installed hidden cameras in their locker room, and they proceed to beat him up. In the city, a guy stops Ayan and Kazuma in an alley. The man suddenly increases in size and attacks the two. However, Kazuma readily beats him up and hands him over to Kirika for investigation. A few days later, girls from the school suddenly start getting sick or getting into accidents. At school, Atsumi barges into their classroom and demands to talk to Nanis. They meet at the back of the school and Atsumi shows him that he now has powers. Moreover, he tells her that he can put a curse on anyone as he did on the other girls. He demands Nanis be his slave, but Nanis just scolds him. He was about to attack Nanis, but Nanis first shoots him with a taser gun. It turns out Ayano had suspected him from the start. They also hand Atsumi over to Kirika. Kirika reports that there is an outbreak of people with abilities like the guy Ayano and Kazuma had encountered before. Yukari then shares that internet forums have been talking about some kind of gaming battle occurring in the city. Meanwhile, Kazuma is also investigating the occurrence with another police officer. They encounter a man who can summon a wolf but Kazuma easily beats him. Kazuma then sees someone who seems like a girl from his past named Kui Ling. Kazuma chases after the girl but she mysteriously vanishes. Meanwhile, Ren is out with his friends. They meet another classmate, Takamatsu, who starts harassing Kenan. However, Ren confronts him and intimidates him to stop. Takamatsu threatens Ren that he'll send his older brother to beat them up. At the same time, Ayano encounters Catherine who is fighting a magical girl. Catherine has been recruited by Kirika to be a part of the special investigative police. Ayano and Kirika defeat the magical girl and interrogate her. Back with Ren, Takamatsu stood true to his promise and sent his brother after them. His brother now has fire powers and tries to burn them. However, Ren easily beats him. Ren discovers that an evil spirit currently possesses Takamatsu's brother, which gives him powers. Meanwhile, Catherine learns from the magical girl that she got her powers from a website called Pandemonium making them sort of players who have to defeat other players to gain experience points. They also learn the name of the person who gave them powers, Vesalius. At the same time, Ren learns the same thing from Takamatsu's brother. Ren also learns the location of where he got his powers. They go to the location Takamatsu's brother points them to and Ren momentarily makes the invisible building show up using his powers. However, he suddenly vanishes. Ren's friends report his disappearance to Ayano and the others. Kazuma easily detects the invisible building and breaks in. Kirika and Ayano also enter the building using Kirika's talismans. Inside, they are confronted by the girl Kazuma called Kui Ling. However, she introduces herself as Lapis, a servant of Vasilius. Lapis tells them to leave and when they don't, she attacks. 
Meanwhile, Kazuma is stuck in an infinitely looping corridor. When Ren disappeared, he was teleported to Pandemonium's leader, Vesalius. Vesalius shows Ren the situation Kazuma and Ayano are currently in and starts taunting him. However, Kazuma detects the surveillance and breaks through with his powers. Kazuma immediately recognizes Vesalius as Wernhard Rhodes. He is someone he already defeated in his past. While they were conversing, Lepis and Ayano suddenly broke through the wall. Upon seeing Lepis, Kazuma yells at Wernhard for using Kui Ling's appearance. Wernhard explains that he just used the lingering thoughts of Kui Ling after her death to create Lepis. Kazuma attacks Wernhard, but Lepis blocks it and proceeds to destroy the whole building. Wernhard and Lepis teleport away, leaving Kazuma and the others to escape the destroyed building. At the jail, some of the players receive a new message from Pandemonium. They have been chosen to level up. One of the chosen ones is Atsumi. The next day, Kirika is sharing information with the Kanagi household. She also reports that she assigned Catherine as a bodyguard to Nanis. Kirika also tells them of Kazuma's past. After he was banished, Kazuma worked as a handyman in another country. There, he met and fell in love with Kui Ling. However, an organization named Amalgis fed Kui Ling to a demon. Meanwhile, Kazuma also bitterly remembers his old lover. In anger, he starts his own investigation. Police find a destroyed park where some of the players who leveled up were mercilessly beaten by Kazuma. Ayan, Kirika, and Ren visit Kazuma's hotel room, but he's not there. In a park somewhere, a secret underground duel is taking place for players to earn experience. While two players are fighting, Kazuma intervenes and brutally interrogates the players about the Pandemonium's location. However, all they learn is that the highest player currently is Atsumi. Kazuma heads to Nanus's location to use her as bait to get to Atsumi. He destroys the barriers protecting Manus and defeats her guards, including Catherine. With no barriers, Atsumi was able to hypnotize Nanus to go to his location, with Kazuma secretly following her. The next morning, Kirika informs Ayano of what Kazuma has done and tells her that she's the only thing that can bring Kazuma back from the past. Yukari is also doing her own investigation and finds the website detailing an assembly of players. At the hospital, Kirika and Catherine confront Ayano and tell her that she's the only thing left important to Kazuma, so she has to snap him back to reality. Meanwhile, Yukari goes to the location of the assembly and finds Atsumi there. Atsumi announces the advent of pandemonium in the Central Park at a designated time. Yukari texts the details to Ayano, but she gets caught by Atsumi. Atsumi then reports to Wernhard that he successfully announced pandemonium's unveiling. However, he now wants to be its master, so he challenges Wernhard to a battle. At the Kanagi household, Genma volunteers to kill his son and destroy Pandemonium. However, Ayano and Ren protest, and they promise to defeat Kazuma instead. That night at the park, the players are battling each other. At the designated time of Pandemonium's advent, all the players suddenly transform and go berserk. However, Kazuma is also there and defeats all the players. He aims to destroy Wernhard's plans. Ayano confronts him in the two battle. However, no matter what Kazuma does, he can't beat Ayano. Ayano then makes Kazuma remember his promise to protect her and Kazuma finally wakes up from his delusions. Ayano then attacks him and Kazuma is defeated. After Kazuma wakes up, he teams up with Ayano to get rid of Pandemonium once and for all. Kazuma, Ayano, and Ren break into Pandemonium. Inside, they confront the hypnotized Nanus and Yukari, as well as Lapis. Lapis summons Atsume who is trapped in a crystal and kills him with her sword. Lapis tells them that the players are being sacrificed to summon Belial, the King of Hell. Ayano and Kazuma attack Lapis while Ren defends the hypnotized Nanus and Yukari. However, Lapis teleports away, leaving Kazuma, Ayano, and Ren to defeat Bilial. The three fly up the park and discover the large magic circle upon which Bilial will emerge. Using all their powers, Kazuma, Ayano, and Ren attack the emerging hand of Bilial and push him back. All that's left of the park is a large crater with Kazuma, Ayano, and Ren tiredly resting in the middle. Wernhard and Lapis show up to congratulate the three of them. Kazuma prepares himself to get attacked, but Wernhard doesn't want to fight since Gemma was watching in the distance. They were about to leave when Kazuma suddenly asks Lapis what Kui Ling's final thoughts are. Lapis answers that it's about killing Kazuma. After they're gone, Kazuma hugs Ayano in sorrow. A few days later, Kazuma is deep in thought remembering what Lapis told him. Kazuma promises to not get stuck in the past anymore, but instead protect the present. However, Ayano doesn't want this and tells him that she doesn't want to be just a damsel in distress for Kazuma to save. She wants Kazuma to bear all the burden. Kazuma accepts her complaints and calls her partner, teasing Ayano in the process. Thus, Ayano angrily chases after Kazuma who is still teasing her.